Hey, welcome to the Dino Fab Lab. Today I'm building some things with a 555 timer chip. This tiny little chip is very versatile. It was invented by Hans Kamenzind in 1970, and since then it's been used in a wide variety of devices. It's available just about anywhere where you can buy electronics. And if you do a Google search online, you will find tons of tutorials and circuits available for you to use. They come in three different versions. There's the 555, which is the 8-pin chip. There's a 16-pin version, which is two of these in one chip, called the 556. And finally, there's a quad version, four of these in a single chip, that's called the 558. These work in a few different ways, but the main two circuits you can build with them are the A-stable circuit and the monostable circuit. The A-stable circuit puts out a pulse width and continues to do so until it's turned off. The monostable circuit will put out a single pulse and then pause until it's triggered again. I'm going to build a device that uses both of these circuits and it's a fuel injector tester. I work uh, at my day job as an auto mechanic and sometimes you need to test fuel injectors. Fuel injectors are triggered by the computer in a car and uh, it's a pulse width that's in microseconds. It ranges from maybe one and a half to ten microseconds depending on what the engine demand is. I want to build one that I can hook up to a fuel injector and see just how it operates. Hook up a fuel pressure gauge and see how much it bleeds down to check the volume of each fuel injector. If there's a bad one, I'll know. So, let's get started in building this. Now this is how I usually start a project. I draw up a schematic, I write out a plan, do a little research, write up what it is I want to do. This is my maker handbook. And then my cat approves it for me. That's Seamus. The circuit I'm making today looks like this. There's a version of this available on my website also. But basically here we have the monostable circuit. That's going to get triggered by this little push button. And what this one will do is output a pulse one second long. This output pulse then gets fed into the A-stable circuit. The A-stable circuit will output a pulse that is... 39 microseconds on and 32 microseconds off. These numbers are determined by these two resistors and this capacitor. Okay, I've breadboarded up the monostable circuit. I've added an LED right here so I can see what the output is because I don't have an oscilloscope yet. That's on my list of things that I must get. So when we push the button, we'll see what happens. And there's the LED lighting up for its one second duration. Now because this one has two resistors on this side of the circuit, it will time out regardless of the fact that I hold down the button. If it only had one resistor, it would continue to power the unit and it would keep doing the pulses again and again. So now that we have our monostable circuit built with a one second pulse output, we need to build the A-stable circuit and trigger it with this one second pulse. Okay, we're back with the A stable circuit now built. We have the second chip in place. And we also have a N channel MOSFET transistor which will carry the load that goes to the injector. Um, you can drive, I think, 200 milliamps off from a 555. Anything more than that, you might damage the chip. So the injector, I'm not sure what it draws, but I know it's certainly more than uh, 200 milliamps. So I designed in a uh, N-channel MOSFET. So that switches on and off as per the output from the A-stable circuit. So now my one-second pulse from the monostable circuit will drive the A-stable circuit. It will output a 39 millisecond on followed by a 32 millisecond off and it'll do this for a period of one second, which amounts to roughly seven pulses. If you do the math, it comes out to a little bit less than that, but if you count it, you can actually blink just about seven pulses. And there it is. Now I can alter the uh, pulse width if I want to by changing these resistors here and by changing this capacitor. Well, I've got my board done, the prototype board that is. I used uh, a program called Express PCB, and uh, I did this, this printed circuit board layout on that program. It's pretty nifty. It's a freebie. I'll post links on the uh, projects page on DinoFab to get to that. It's a free download, and they'll also make the circuit board for you. 
and then I uh, went along, put in all my components into the board, and uh, put a pink mark on all the traces as I did them. And I used one of those Radio Shack prototype boards. It's just full of holes, and basically just took this little piece of paper taped it right to the board on the top and then just kind of flipped the paper back and forth and transferred everything to the board to see where my traces and all my components went and um, then spent two hours soldering this all up that seems like a lot of time for a small board but the reason being is on the back side all of the traces are done by hand with pieces of wire and jumpered with a with a soldering iron this gets a little tricky, and I found the trick to it is when you want to jumper one dot to another is to cool off your soldering iron. I use the kind that just has a little sponge uh, pad in the base. I don't have a, a temperature-controlled one. That's another thing on my wish list along with the oscilloscope. The project's now inside the box. Got it all mounted up in there with a single screw holding it in place. We have the two LEDs in the top and the momentary contact switch. This one's the power LED, that one's for the pulse width. And now we'll put the screws in the box and uh, power it up and see how it works. Alright, the printed circuit board has been mounted inside the enclosure. I have it connected to a 12 volt power supply and instead of a fuel injector I'm using a Bosch relay which will simulate the coil inside the fuel injector. It's about the same load. Let's turn the power on. Well, there's my power light. Now we'll push the button and see what happens. How about that? We have a pulse going to that solenoid. You can hear it click as it turns on and off. And so there it is, a fuel injector tester built from two 555 timer chips and a few other components. Be sure to check out dinofab.com for a link on there in the projects page to this project and others. And thanks for watching.